Hannibal, a seemingly serene town, has a dark half-century secret. Join us as we delve into the enigmatic tale of The Lost Boys of Hannibal, a saga that has baffled locals and investigators for years. In our investigation, we'll uncover the eerie circumstances surrounding the disappearance of three young adventurous boys, the new theory inserting itself into the case, and keep watching as we attempt to unravel what most likely happened behind the unsettling events that rocked Hannibal to its core. In May of 1967, three adventurous boys ventured into woodlands near their home in Hannibal, Missouri, to investigate a portion of its extensive cave system. They were never seen again. Since then, the story of the Lost Boys of Hannibal has fascinated people all over the globe. In 1967, Joey Hogue was 13 years old and an avid amateur scientist. He appreciated nature and wanted to be the first man on the moon. When he discovered that construction near his home on State Highway 79 had exposed a new cave entrance, he was eager to investigate it. The entrance to the cave had a diameter of one meter, and the construction crew had not posted any hazard or warning signs to deter adventurous lads. On May 9th, Joey led his small expedition to Murphy's Cave after recruiting his 11-year-old brother Billy and their 14-year-old friend Craig Dowell. Even though the boys' parents found out about their risky excursion that evening and forbade them from returning to the caves, the group planned to revisit the site after school the following day. Filmmaker Frankie Caballetta remarked, they were just really exploratory kids outside enjoying nature. There was much to investigate for the young nature-loving boys after school in Missouri, also known as the Cave State. According to the Missouri Department of Natural Resources, the state has over 7,300 caves, 20 of which are accessible for public tours. This vast subterranean world was notoriously tricky to navigate, with some locals recalling how they would unravel a coil of twine or make chalk markings to help them find their way back after exploring. Joey, Billy and Craig, armed only with headlamps and spades, left for Murphy's Cave on May 10th as soon as they had changed out of their school uniforms. The Hogue boys may have found it easy to get away on their adventure, when their parents left their sister in charge while they went to the store. A fourth boy could not join them because he was grounded and confined to his room by his parents. A local school teacher is verified as the last person to see the trio as they walked toward the construction site near the state highway. When the boys failed to return home that evening, their families immediately searched the surrounding area and contacted the authorities. Following reports of a cave-in that day near Murphy's Cave, authorities suspected the boys had become stranded in an inaccessible passageway and coordinated a massive search and rescue operation. The fact that the friends had no food or water when they set out on their journey galvanized experts from Missouri and further afield to join the search. Authorities would have been well aware that time was of the essence as this was not the first time people had vanished in Missouri's caves. In the past, lost cavers were discovered injured after a few days, found after wandering back home of their own accord, or in the worst cases, discovered dead under cave-ins many days later. A witness claimed to have seen one of the boys returning to Murphy's cave with a shovel later in the day, but this could not be confirmed. In the meantime, experts were brought in from Washington, D.C., and community buildings were transformed into centers for rescuers and reporters. Every known cave passage was inspected at least three times, and steam excavators were used to enlarge areas where cave-ins may have occurred. Unfortunately, on May 12, 1967, the Hannibal Courier Post reported that hope for Billy, Joe, and Craig was rapidly diminishing. Rescuers had begun to hypothesize that the missing friends may not have been in Murphy's cave when they vanished, but had headed to investigate other caves or the surrounding forest. The two Hogues and Craig Dowell 
were never found, nor was there any evidence of them being in the cave in the first place. In 2006, construction workers working on Highway 79 discovered a new small cave which was immediately inspected for signs of the missing children. However, authorities determined that there was no evidence of their presence. Even though a cave-in may be the most plausible explanation for what happened to the boys, some theorize that a more evil fate may have befallen them. A 2015 book presented a surprising interpretation of the 56-year-old Hannibal story. In his book Soul Speak, Missing Children Reveal Their Serial Killer from Beyond, John Wingate proposes a hypothesis suggesting that the boys may have been victims of serial killer John Wayne Gacy. Gacy was convicted in 1980 in Chicago of murdering 33 boys between 1972 and 1978, although there have been persistent rumors that the actual number was much higher. His residence at the time, near Chicago's primary airport, would have been within 300 miles of where the boys disappeared. According to this theory, Gacy met the Hannibal boys near the caves, offered them a ride home, and then drove them to a nearby wooded area, where he attacked, murdered, and buried them. Wingate stated he began investigating the theory while signing copies of his first book in Hannibal and Quincy, Illinois. During the book signings, he began receiving separate psychic claims from three women. All three stated that they shared the belief that Gacy was responsible for the disappearance and murders of the Hannibal boys. The psychics maintain that the three boys were tortured, sodomized, suffocated, strangled, and buried in one grave, Wingate said. Wingate met one of the psychics for the first time during a book signing for Lost Boys at the Mark Twain Museum in Hannibal. During his presentation, he spotted a woman in the audience who was crying and visibly distressed. Later, Wingate discovered that the woman was a Southern Missouri psychic who allegedly saw the three boys' spirit energy manifest up front when I was speaking, he said. That was the start of it. This was not the first time Gacy's name had been associated with the missing boys. In 1978, after Gacy was apprehended and all of his darkness was revealed, according to Wingate, many rumors and concerns arose in Hannibal as to whether Gacy could have been in the area when the three boys disappeared. According to Wingate, at the time Hannibal police contacted the FBI to inquire about any potential Gacy connections. In 1967, Gacy lived and worked in Waterloo, Iowa, whereas his mother lived in Little Rock, Arkansas. Wingate stated that if Gacy were to visit his mother, he would take Highway 61 from Waterloo to Little Rock, which passes directly through Hannibal. As Wingate investigated the possibility of Gacy's involvement further, he continued to uncover additional connections. During the massive cave search for the boys in 1967, there were reports in Hannibal that a mystery man had spent a few days near the cave openings where road construction was taking place, a location where the three boys had been playing in the days preceding their disappearance. They had been seen darting down into those caves on May 8th and May 9th, Wingate said. They were last seen up on the road watching the construction on May 10th at about 5.15. Meanwhile, the mysterious man was no longer seen at that location after the boys went missing, according to Wingate. Two clairvoyants told Wingate that John Wayne Gacy was that mystery man, he said. Wingate acknowledged that many people would find the psychic-based hypotheses regarding Gacy's involvement implausible. But I decided just to lay it out and let people decide for themselves if there's any merit to the story. Sticking with sinister theories, one theory suggests that ghosts were to blame. Joseph Nash McDowell, who was likely the inspiration for Mark Twain's Dr. Robinson in The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, purchased the Missouri Caverns in 1840 and conducted illegal experiments on human corpses in them. When Amanda, his 14-year-old daughter, died, he believed he could communicate with her in the afterlife 
by taking her body into the caves. He placed her corpse in a large glass container filled with alcohol and suspended it from the cave's ceiling. In some circles, the ghost of Amanda was accused of the boy's disappearance. What most likely happened to the three boys? The Gacy theory is a long shot at best, and Amanda probably has nothing to do with it. The most logical explanation is definitely the most probable in this case. The boys got lost or died in the maze-like cave system. One might question why, if deceased, the boys' bodies weren't recovered. Our perception of caves is often romanticized through the movies we watch. Caving is one of the most dangerous recreational activities in the world. Roughly three people die each year in caving accidents in the US. Caves are capable of killing people in more than one way. When exploring caves, one needs to be aware of falling rocks. Between 1959 and 1967, only two miles of Murphy's Complex cave passages had been mapped, but this map was extremely useful during the 1967 search. Murphy's is a complex limestone fissure labyrinth cave with multiple intersections. Murphy's passages are only two feet wide and one to two feet high, making it extremely difficult for an adult-led search and rescue team to conduct a thorough search, but easy for the boys to crawl through and get lost. The bad things what most likely happened is that the boys are still in the cave. As stated previously, Missouri's caves are numerous and expansive. It is possible that the Highway 79 construction blasts created an entrance that investigators and searchers did not discover, but the boys did. Or they might have entered a known entrance, found an unknown tunnel, become disoriented and died. Given the boys' penchant for exploration, it is also conceivable that they discovered an entrance unrelated to the construction in an unknown area and died in the unknown cave system. In the event of a cave-in, dust would have settled and the area would have resembled the aftermath of previous rockfalls, making it impossible for searchers to locate the boys' bodies. Bill Dean, the half-brother of Craig Dowell, has stated that he remains hopeful that the mystery will be solved, even after all this time. It's just the uncertainty. That's the hard part, not knowing what happened. They just disappeared off the face of the earth. There's a few of us left that want some answers, he said. According to Missouri law, missing person cases are never closed and remain open until resolved. One day because of this, the world may learn the truth about what happened to the lost boys of Hannibal all those years ago. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.